name's Dana and this is my knitting podcast where I check in with you guys and show you what I've been knitting on and sometimes crocheting and all things fiber and yarn and yarny goodness. So welcome if you're new. Welcome. Um, like I said, my name is Dana and I am a mom living in the the woods of Northern Illinois in the US and I am a mom of three, almost four. And so I come on here and share all the things that I'm knitting. So, and if you are returning then, welcome back. Thank you guys for joining me for another episode. So I recently went back and went all the way through uh, every episode I've done and gave everything a new thumbnail so it all kind of matched because they were kind of all over the place when I first started and I didn't really know what I was doing or what I wanted to do. I still don't know what I'm doing on YouTube, but I at least made them match and hopefully be a little bit more pretty and a little bit cuter. So uh, yeah, like I said, this is my knitting podcast. I do have something to share with you in a little bit that's crocheted. So that's exciting because it has been a while since I've picked up a crochet hook and I feel like I have two left hands and I don't know how to hold my hook anymore. It's been a long time. So that's a slow moving, um, I can't think of the word. That's a slow moving, it's still not there. Pregnancy brain. That's a slow moving process. There it is. Ding, 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 I found the word. Oh boy, words are hard sometimes, especially when all your your blood is flowing to a baby in your stomach. So anyway, I am excited. I have a lot of things to share with you. I've been knitting a lot and like I said, crocheting. I don't have any finished knitting or crochet things to share with you today, but I do have a fun little like DIY, um, I made, and I'll show you when I show my um, my whip, but I made some cute little stitch markers, well, progress keepers. It's um, a little progress keeper that's a little pumpkin, and all I did was used thread and a little like wool felt ball, and so I will share with you how I made that in a little bit. So how are you guys doing? We are not up to much, <laughs> really, really not up to that much. Um, so I'll just dive right into my projects. Um, I guess I'll show one of the ones that has the progress keeper first. That would probably make the most sense. And that is something that I didn't share last week. I had talked about how I had started it for my husband and it was too big. So I'm trying to craft together a vanilla cabin sock, which will maybe eventually turn into a pattern. But for now, my husband has been wanting socks and I've made him a pair of socks that didn't have a heel a couple years ago and they're fine, but he really, he's been seeing the socks that I'm making lately and I think he's feeling a little left out. So I told him I'll make him some socks. And I did find, I don't think I have its label, but I found this in my stash actually. It's Rowan Pure Woolsted Pure wor wor <laughs> Words Pure Worsted Wool. And everything that I tell you guys, since it can't come out of my mouth and process through my brain right today, I will put in the description for you guys with links to everything because sometimes you just have brain farts. So anyway, I have no idea what this color is. I really don't know where I got it from. Let's see if it'll focus. But it is this really cool rustic green that has like little specks of red. I see like little hints of blue. I don't know where it's from. <laughs> it was under my bed in my bin of forgotten yarn. And I saw it and I was thinking immediately, okay, worsted weight socks, that's kind of my thing, that's what I do, I like cabin socks. And so I cast on way too many because I was doing math, thinking about my gauge that I, I use for my Wool of the Andes socks, which is just a tiny bit thinner. It's worsted, but it's a tiny bit thinner. So anyway, 
I finally got the measurements right. I tried this on him last night. It looks a little big, but it's bigger than I'm used to making for me. So this is just the start of his cabin sock. I guess I'm holding it upside down. <laughs> oh goodness. This is just the start of his cabin sock. And like I said, it's worsted weight. This is a thick worsted weight. I'm kind of, I mean, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's bulky, but it is definitely thicker than the worsted weight I have done before. Um, but it fits and that's all that matters. So he's excited for those. And then I'll show you my little, if I can get it to wiggle on camera here. My little um, progress keeper I made, which is just a little pumpkin. I don't know if it'll go super close. Get me out of there. So it's just a little pumpkin and um, it started as a wool felt ball that I had gotten from Benzie Design, which is just a felt store. They have an online shop and actually they have a brick and mortar in the town we used to live in. And so I had gotten these little, I mean, real small <laughs> felt balls and I had never done anything with them. I had them for a couple years. I think I had planned to make hair clips or headbands for my daughters and I just never had the chance to. So I was thinking about stitch markers and how I wanted a few more for fall, like autumn specific. And so I decided to make these into pumpkins. If it wants to pick up, you'll see that it's kind of, I squished the ball and added some embroidery thread to kind of mimic the ridges of a pumpkin and gave it a little leaf made of wool felt. And then I had these actually in my my jewelry stash, which I don't even know what they're called. And it's kind of funny that I have a jewelry stash because I don't know how to make jewelry. My mom threw went my mom my mom threw went. <laughs> oh my goodness. My mom went through a jewelry making stage a while back and then she just had so much stuff and she gave a bunch to my my sister and I. And like I said, I don't really make jewelry. I don't know how. So if any of you see this and you have any tips of how I can make this a little better, I mean, I'm not looking for like quality where I'm gonna sell them or anything. This is just a for fun me project I had. I do think that I would like to add a little bit of length between the hook. I'm gonna call it the hook. I don't know what it's called. And the actual pumpkin because I want it to dangle a little bit more, I think. So that is one thing that I would change. Um, I like that I didn't use a glue gun for any of this because I didn't have to deal with all that little glue gun strings and everything. I just used a needle and thread. Um, anyway, that is my finished project is the pumpkin, but the sock I'm very excited about. So um, I ended up casting on, my husband is a 10 and a half whatever US sizes are, he says 10 and a half. And so I cast on 44 stitches and I'm using a size seven circular needle. And it does fit. It's always so awkward, isn't it? To put socks on that are still on the needles. I know they sell, don't they sell things that you can, like an extender type thing specifically for trying on socks before they're done. I thought I had seen those online. If you know about them, let me know in the comments, please, because first of all, my husband does not have hobbit feet at all, but I felt so awkward because I've never knit fitted socks like this that are so big. It doesn't have, it doesn't have hobbit feet, but I've never knit socks that I keep showing them upside down. I like don't even know the shape of a sock when it's this big. It just felt all awkward and I had double pointed needles trying to hold stitches and so they wouldn't all pop off when I was trying to try it on him, but it does fit and I'm very excited. So it's a quick knit and um, he's really excited. These are actually, he knows about them obviously, I've tried them on him, but they're actually for his birthday, which is October 14th. And so I thought I better start them now because I'm due October 21st and really I, Three times now I've gone early, so he could be sharing a birthday with his son, we'll see, or he could come sooner. So I'd like to have his present 
done and ready to go, even if it's not a surprise anymore. So that's the exciting thing that I cast on. Mostly I was so relieved that I figured out how to make them fit him because I did the math wrong at first too. Um, I did the gauge for two inches. Okay, so before I made them too big, I made the gauge for two inches thinking, cause I didn't have, I didn't have a ton done. So I was trying to cheat and go quicker with my swatching. Um, so I figured out the gauge for two inches and I was like, well, I'll just double it and that'll be four inches. Well, I forgot to double it and it wanted me to cast on like 20 stitches. And I was like, that does not sound right. But I was like, okay, I'll trust the math. <laughs> So I guessed on 20 st stitches and immediately, and immediately was like, this is wrong. This is not right. This isn't going well. So I finally figured it out. I felt so bad. I kept messaging him at work. <laughs> and he has the kind of job where he, he, he works in a chemistry lab. So he'll be in with like the lab code and the glasses and doing all that in the lab. But then he'll come back to his office for breaks and stuff. So I was like... You keep coming back to your, your office and someone has more math questions for you. I'm sorry, but math is not my thing. So that's that first sock and I'm really excited. And I will show you my shirt doesn't want to stay up. I have progress on another sock. And this one I did share with you guys last week a little bit. I had just gotten pretty much to the color change where I changed back for what the main color of the sack will actually be. And I've come a long way now, I think. I forgot to bump up my progress keeper from whenever I finished, but this is my just vanilla sack. And let's see if I can get it closer. I used whatever was left from my Mandy's Makings share a pair, which was I think it might have been back from spring, the A Beautiful Rain. Um, I don't have its matching color that it came with, but it's this kind of mauve, purpley, it's cute, whatever, however you would describe it, it's cute. And then this, some of you were asking or saying that you had seen, did I drop a, oh no I didn't, it's just a color speckle, I was like, no. Um. Some of you guys were asking or just curious about how this was going to knit up. So this is the Leading Men Fiber Arts, um, try to remember all of its info, showstopper, and the color is Sand Dollar. So this is it all around. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I, I'm almost to where I'm gonna start my heel. Do I do this for the heel too? Kind of break it up. I only have this much yarn, which I did a shortened cuff, so hopefully I wouldn't run out of yarn. But do you think I can get away with it? Can I do yarn chicken? <laughs> maybe, maybe what I do is two heels that are mauve, and then I will kind of put this on scrap yarn, work the second sock. And if I have enough, I could go with also color changing on the toe. Yarn chicken makes me so nervous. Some people get a thrill out of it and I like to know that I'm gonna have enough yarn. And I also don't like weaving in, or not weaving in ends. Well, no, I don't like that either. <laughs> I don't like sewing. So I try to avoid changing yarn halfway. Like if I start a pair of Wool of the Andy socks, for myself, I know that I'm not gonna use a full skein and really I could start sack number two with that like a quarter of a skein or so that's left. But I just, I get two skeins, one for each sack every time because I don't like, I don't like yarn chicken and I don't like sewing things back together. So I would much rather have scraps. I've never really done a scrappy project yet, but Anyway, it makes me a little bit nervous to play yarn chicken with this because I don't want to tear it out. And also I don't want to knit it and fall in love with it. And then the second sock comes out and I'm like, no, I can't replicate it. So here's my 
happy little cinnamon roll charm that I'm using as a progress keeper from um, Sucre Sucre Miniatures. I love it. Although you know what has been happening? This, so this is made out of um, polymer, polymer clay. And so she, oh, I see what she did. Okay, I'm taking notes for my progress keeper. She just added on some little, I don't know the jewelry terms, but little loops to lengthen it up a little bit. Um, she used the same hook as I did, but what I noticed is this isn't really stuck to anything. I'm sorry, it's so small. It doesn't even know where to focus. It's not really stuck to anything, except it's probably stuck in there and then it got cooked or however they make it. It keeps wanting to pull out. And so it makes me nervous because this is so cute and I'm really into cinnamon rolls but I don't want to lose it, especially if I'm knitting not at home. I don't want to lose it, and so that's making me a little nervous. I'm wondering if there's a way I can secure it. Um, and I don't, I don't know. I've never actually gotten a progress keeper from her. I know she does a lot of them for knitters and crocheters, so she might have some tips. I don't want to come back and, and tell her it's not working and, like, I don't know. I, I'm not that person who wants to make someone feel bad if something isn't working, but she might have some tips, so maybe I send her a message. Um, her name is Chelsea, and she's very nice. I worked with her to do a, she was doing subscription boxes for a while a few years ago, so I just need to tell her, hey, I don't want to lose my special cinnamon roll charm. Okay, rambling about cinnamon rolls, <laughs> lamenting that. I had to change my diet a little bit because of my blood sugar and blood pressure in this pregnancy and I haven't had cinnamon rolls in a few weeks and it's a tragedy. It's pretty sad. Um, I have two more things to share with you guys. I cannot ramble. There's no room for rambling. Not today. Now here I was thinking I wasn't gonna have a lot to share with you guys. And I feel like I did more knitting than I thought I did. All right, my next whip that I wanted to show you is from Michelle by Tales of Knots. And it's a crocheted shrug. It is called, so I can get it up here. <laughs> As I take out all my yarn. This is called the Hayride Shrug. And it is a free pattern on her website. I believe it's paid on Ravelry. I'm not sure I didn't actually click into the link, but I know there is a free version on her website and that's what I've been using. And she just recently started designing because, well, designing non-free, like paid patterns because she had moved to the US and was waiting for her, like, I don't know how that works, but like a worker's permit. She was waiting for that to come in or like go through, I don't know how it works. Um, so she was doing a lot of free patterns on her blog. So if you head to her blog, I'm sure there's tons of other free patterns on there. Um, she is specifically crochet only. She told me she wants to learn how to knit because she wanted to knit my Hugo Home pillow that I designed. And we actually talked about for a while, she was going to knit or um, crochet the crochet version of it and then things got crazy in the world and we never did. So maybe we will um, work our way back to that. So anyway, it is a free pattern, so I can tell you a little bit about it. Um, I think I am crocheting the size small. It's these really cute shell stitches all the way around. I am learning a new technique that I've never really done before in crochet, um, which is the extended I'm trying to think what it's called. I'm doing half double crochet, and then at the end, I'm doing an extended half double crochet. I think to keep it straight and keep from pulling, although it looks like I might have forgotten, or maybe I did an extra one. Something wonky's going on there. I'm gonna have to revisit that, I think. Like I said, it's been a long time since I picked up my crochet hook. Oh man. Um, the yarn I'm using is Wool of the Andes, worsted and I I will link the color I think it's 
something to do with farmhouse is what I want to say. And it's brown, it's tweedy, it's my colors. And this is the other progress keeper that I made. Another pumpkin, it's just a little white polar bear pumpkin, a Cinderella pumpkin. Yeah, I do think I want to add a little extender thing because it's really cute, I love it, but it wants to get all jumbled up right in there. So, so I will try to remember or find the things, whatever jewelry necessities I need to do that so that um, you guys can see what it looks like with the little dingle hoppers on the end too. <laughs> Um, what else? I'm knitting the size small. I'm trying to remember what her sizes were. Whatever the smallest size was, which I could go between small and medium. Um, I like that I can wear that this, this fall because, like I said, it's just like a shrug. So, um, I don't have to worry about fitting my belly in there or anything. So that will be really cool is that I can wear this, this fall because I'm watching all my podcasting friends and all their gorgeous sweaters they're making and I'm like ah add it to the list add it to the list add it to the list of when am I ever going to be able to knit and wear this because I've I've been pregnant for like six years straight <laughs> it feels like um so cocoons and shrugs and cardigans are perfect for me especially right now so um what else did I want to tell you about this I, I told you the yarn um, it's free so all the info is in there. I am using an I9, what is it, five and a half millimeter. This is just like something I got from Joann's. That's the other thing, I don't crochet much so I have like the cheapy supplies, the, the cheapy hooks and I don't like metal usually. I would love to find a pair of nine inch circular needles for my sock knitting that are just like my Haya Haya's and my, um, however you say it, chai, chai goos, um, but like bamboo, because bamboo, I really like how the yarn slides on it. I don't love the, the metal as much. And this, I feel like something about this metal hook with the yarn, maybe because it's kind of rustic and because it's, I don't know, um, it keeps wanting to get stuck. Also not helping is that it's a really dark yarn and the times when I work on this are um, in the evenings because it's a little bit hot during the day. So in the evenings when the kids go to bed and my husband and I are sitting watching TV, I will work on this, but it is hot during the day. So it's harder to see this at night. We actually, we have an overlight fan or an overlight an overhead light in our living room where we hang out but we actually just usually use the side uh, lamps and like next to the couches which is perfect unless you need to have really good lighting because you're working with something some really dark yarn so I'm really excited about it it's gotten me excited about crocheting again because I haven't done it I haven't picked it up in a while so it's been really cool. I'm really excited to see how it turns out. So this is the farmhouse mystery named Woolies, um, not Woolies, Wool of the Andes. And I'm thinking I'm going to mix it with this, which I got at our local yarn store. I wanted something that kind of complemented each other. I. The lighting is kind of weird. This is much lighter and much more gray, but it is picking up some of the speckles from this. I'm not sure. I got this and I wasn't really sure what I was going to make with it. It is nylon, 30% nylon, 27% cotton, 24% acrylic, a little bit of silk, and a little bit of linen. So I'm not sure how that's going to like drape or anything but it is just for the the ribbing around the edge like the edging so we'll see um I have enough of it and so that's kind of what I jumped at first was I have that in my stash perfect clear my stash and um I think the colors will go really well together so I'm excited to finish this color and cast on 
or not cast on, whatever they say in crochet language, add my next color and I will show you guys how that looks when they're right next to each other with this shell stitch. Although I think the border is not shell stitch, so I'm excited to see how that goes. Um, I have one more thing to share with you. I did show it last week and I only have a little bit of progress. And this is my happy brainless knitting project right now. Because look at that, look at that yarn. It is so squishy and soft. This is for the Rose Love blanket I'm making for our little baby boy. And it's Yarn Bee Snuggle Up and I think the color is actually just called silver. So I made this for our daughter Lucy in a pink and so now we're having a boy. So I had this in my stash also. I feel like someone should come to your house and like at least give you a high five if you are using your stash yarn. Like good for you. Good for you that you didn't go out and buy more yarn for this project. You have some self-control. Anyway, no one's gonna show up at my house and high five me for using something I bought when I had no idea what I needed it for at the time, are they? Someone should. <laughs> anyway, this is the, uh, like I said, this is the Rose Love blanket and I'm just knitting because I don't think my brain could handle much more than that with this yarn. It is already, um, it's, it's a brainless knitting project, but you do have to pay attention because it's so fuzzy. You have to pay attention to make sure you're only picking up one stitch at a time. Although if I've knit two together, I'll probably I wouldn't even know at this point because of the fuzzy yarn, it's very forgiving. So that's nice to do. Um, I have been working on this at nighttime too, when I'm done working with the, the um, Hayride Shrug because again, it's hot. It's hot to work on in the daytime, but also it's kind of like a relaxing thing to do before bed. Because the other thing with the Hayride Shrug is that since I'm so out of practice with crochet, I have to count. Like I'm not, my, my eyes aren't trained to remember what each of the stitches, what each of the chains, like the half double crochets look like. So I'm supposed to do three in each stitch or like you skip however many stitches and then do three to make the shell. My eye is like, I forgot how to count crochet chains. <laughs> and so I have to like, in my head, do okay, one, two, three, and then go to the next one, one, two, three. So that one's not as mindless, but this one is, I just have to make sure that I'm pulling one strand, or I'm, you know, doing one stitch at a time so I don't knit anything together on accident. But I'm really happy. I'm happy that I'm working through my whips. Also, someone should come to your house if you are working through your whips and you didn't cast something new on. Um, so I'm gonna do that for you. You know what? If you are working on something that has been on the back burner, or you picked up something and you didn't go buy it, high five to you because it is hard, especially this time of year. I thought it was hard when I first got into, well, like back into knitting my for this podcast because I was becoming friends with some of these podcasters that I'm watching and obsessing over the yarn that they found. And I'm like, self-control, self-control, self-control. <laughs> but it's even harder now going into fall and winter because you're actually seeing the weather get closer that you know that's the weather you're gonna wear these things in. And so someone, I don't know, there should be like a reward system from, I don't know who, like someone needs to create a printable list that you can hang up on your wall and you can give yourself a sticker every time you finish a whip or pull something out of your stash. Those seem to be my two main things. Is that what you guys notice too because I love the yarn I have. I love it. I just, I'm bad about shopping my stash because I think, I don't know why. I like seeing the new yarn or the yarn I've never seen before. Part of it is so easy to be like, well, I have to go and count and figure out if that's enough yarn. And for me to do this project, 
instead of just seeing, well, this is how many this person ordered, I'm just gonna order that too. So we need to do this. We need, we need a reward system here. And I don't know what the reward is, but man, it needs to be done. <laughs> do you think that would help you? I think that would help me. If the reward was ice cream, I think that would help me. Okay, um, that is all I have for you guys today. Like I said, I have no finished projects. I shared with you my four whips and I'm hoping to cruise through them. Like I said, I don't wanna pick up anything new, especially before baby's born, which hopefully means I will be starting 2022 with some new projects. And hopefully I can sit down and really think about what I wanna make. I know a sweater is on that list. I'm gonna not be pregnant next year. <laughs> That is the plan, that is the hope. Um, so hopefully making a sweater next year that I can actually wear that year would be wonderful. Um, I'm trying to think what else. That's all I have. I do have a request if you guys could. I am putting together a, um, like a Q and A video for during my maternity leave. I have a whole bunch of videos lined up that I'm excited about. Um, so if you have any questions, that you want to ask me they can be i don't know knitting related designing related yarn related um just questions about me or my family within reason and um our house anything like that so um yeah if you have any questions please comment them down below because i will be putting together that list i'm also going to have a question box up on Instagram and put those together so that I can make that video for you guys and that's all I have for you guys I think I think today's a pretty short one um, I'm gonna cruise through my whips and hopefully have some really good ones to show you that are finished next week so thank you guys for hanging out with me and um, I will see you guys next week <laughs>